Welcome everyone. This is the first segment of the train today. Um, new installation, which is a very important part of installing a pump. Uh, you start out with a good installation, it'll save you a lot of maintenance and headaches down the road. Uh, before you start uh, performing any type of maintenance or work, you always want to make sure you got the power locked out, uh, any valves or anything that could cause movement, any potential energy is locked out. Uh, once you've achieved all that, then you can remove the guard, uh, then uncouple your, uh, your pump from your motor, check your, to check your rotation. Then after that, you want to put it all back together and put your guard back on it before you start it. Uh, never start without the guard on it. And then you can take your lock out, your lockout off, and go ahead and, and start uh, your uh, starting procedures. First thing to do is check to make sure you have an ad adequate base. You know, this is a little pipe, a little motor, so this channel base is very well suited for this this type of setup. Uh, you, know, you want to anchor it down, or usually anchor places, to try and get it leveled up as best as possible. Uh, sometimes you may have to even concrete or grout it in. Uh, more level and more um, solid foundation you got, the better off. Uh, keeps vibration down. Uh, helps save money in the long run with mechanical failures. The other thing that, that comes up a lot is pipe stress. You know, this particular pump's an insuction centrifugal. Suction, discharge. Uh, it's it's very key to have minimal pipe stress. You want to have the pipe being supported on its own, not have it supported by the pump. Because you know, even with cast iron housing pumps, they will flex. And when you have something flexing like a housing, it'll create premature failure on the seal and bearings. If it's bad enough, it'll actually, we've had them to actually crack the flanges, uh, catastrophic failure. And once you've got all your piping set up, uh, you want to perform a leak test. You know, open your valves, uh, check and see what you've got uh, as far as pressure wise. Uh, all your flange bolts are tight, gas is in place. Make sure you're not leaking through your mechanical seal or your packing, which is in this area here. Um, then you've got to uh, double check for proper rotation, which uh, you've got a, uh, normally the best way to do it, you've got a flexible coupling here in the middle. If you can, <coughs> it's a disengage it. Uh, because on some pumps, especially like this one for instance, if you were to run it backwards, there's a good chance you're going to spin, them, spin the impeller off and it'll be like a jack screw and it'll bust the shaft or handle the impeller. Because if you turn it the wrong direction, this will actually unthread. Wrong direction will be that way. So, normal direction would be rotating in this direction. Uh, once you determine your rotation is correct, you couple back up, make sure all your, your uh, set screws or bolts or whatever type of coupling you've got. This particular one is a lug joint. It's a simple coupling. Um, it's got fingers and interlock with the rubber element. But no matter what you've got, just, you know, even though it's a flexible coupling, you want to get it as perfectly as lined as possible, which you've got capability of doing. Um, <clears throat> once you've got it installed, coupling, if it's on some couplings, you have to grease them. Uh, they have what they call a grid flex, like a fault grid flex. They've got like a interlocking, it's like a spring, 
lubricants on both sides of the coupling, couplings, and you've got to have lubrication in there. Uh, once you've got all that said and done, then you want to make sure you install your coupling card. Uh, you want to cover the rotating chass where somebody can't inadvertently stick their fingers in or get a piece of clothing caught into it. Of course, verify all the valves are open before you start this up. You know, bleed off the air. Uh, of course, if it's got a lubricator, a side level lubricator like this one, you've got to make sure you've got it set to the proper height. Uh, there's a line on ones that have these usually where the old level has to be. Uh, of course, you know, a lot of them are grease lubricated. So, what the proper installation of those maintenance manual um, to that effect? Then you've got uh, apply power to it. Check your voltages, your amperages, and with anything as in previous classes, document all that stuff. Document your voltages. Document your amperage, uh, pressure flow. Um, you want to leave have that stuff as a baseline when you first start out. Call us when you call in, us or any pump company. Those numbers and what you're getting now will help diagnose the issues. And then of course, you know, check to make sure your pump is actually done what it's designed to do. Then the pressure is supposed to be done and the flow. You've got a flow meter. Alright. Thank you everyone.